YouTube, it's your boy Killer Cam back with another reaction. Uh, I was scrolling, bored, looking for something to react to, and I think I ran across the perfect video. <laughs> it's a Miami's World of BBLs. I ain't gonna hold you. Let's get right into it. Get some BBLs. I ain't trying to hold you. Miami I basically do that the face app does, but you know, for the night. Yeah. That's what we call a skinny BBL. How does it impact your life now that you're walking, moving back to normal? I mean, I'm happier than ever. I love it. Now I'm like pulling in a bell player, so. <laughs> Alright, Miguel, are you ready? Ready! I gotta do my. I'd say this is uh, the light BBL. My butt got too big. It just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Is it insane to say that you know people that have died from BBL It's been normalized, but for most people, that's insane. Tennessee mother who lost her life after undergoing a popular plastic surgery yeah, procedure like, in Miami yeah. is suing the surgical center and the doctor who performed the operation. It smelled like death. I'm not kidding. It smelled rotten. The people there were so rude. It was a meat market. They were just in and out, in and out. It's gut-wrenching. This is a young woman who came down here. Like a lot of people, she just wanted to change the way she looked. Unfortunately, she's never going to see her children again. Sheesh. Oh, man. Get this black ass head out of here. Damn, baby boy out there screaming. The Brazilian butt lift, or the BBL, is the hottest trend in plastic surgery today. It's where women undergo liposuction on their thighs, hips, and stomach, only to have the same fat injected into their butt. The goal? To create a fuller, juicier, and rounder buttocks. But here's what most people don't know. There are people that actually die from BBLs. And according to MedPage today, the BBL is labeled as the most dangerous aesthetic procedure ever performed. It's estimated that the death rate may be as high as 1 in 2400 surgeries. And the reality is, some people go into a surgery to get a nicer ass, and and they end up not living to tell the tale. Now, while some clinics are run by world-class surgeons, others, they're being called human butcher shops, where the smell of death supposedly lingers in the air. There are places, yes, right here in the United States, where clinics aren't even owned by licensed doctors and where unqualified staff might mistakenly oh, wow. liposuction your intestines or inject your fat into major veins, causing instant respiratory failure. And the epicenter Holy of this shit. deadly trend is Miami, Florida, ground zero for countless bot surgeries and life-changing tragedies. So we had to Miami to speak with surgeons, injection clinics, models, and lawyers to get to the bottom of the story. Let's dive in. Quick announcement, the new shirt is flying off the shelves, classy in the front, busy in the back. We also have the big dog sweatshirts. You guys have absolutely crushed on these two. So look fresh as f and represent the brand. Link is in description, link is in pinned comments. Go to the site and get what you like. Time to dive into the world of BBLs. Gotta mute that music, man. That music be messing me up. And meet with owner Eni Silviera, an entrepreneur who has invented an injection technique that is much safer than the BVL. It's here we get to see her methods in action. We speak to patients who have suffered through botch jobs from a surgery gone wrong. And finally, we assemble a team of six models to test for ourselves whether we can tell the difference between a natural and BVL booty. So, my name is Eni Silvera. I'm a family nurse practitioner, and here in Miami, Florida, I'm known as the Booty Queen. Imagine walking to the beach and you just see like this beautiful round booty right you have hearts in your eyes so basically the Bella Vida instant BBL is giving you that nice round juicy athletic looking tush and what got you into the world of boots I'm Brazilian Miami. number one so we're known for butts At number two I'm in Miami so I constantly am in a bikini I kind of started becoming like a mad scientist here at the office and just like mixing stuff trying it out on my friends 
And then so finally I got to the perfect cocktail and so I trademarked the name, I patented the technique and they send me all over the world to train different clinics, different providers on how to make the perfect loop. Tell me about the dark side of the BBL world. Tennessee mother who lost her life after undergoing a popular plastic surgery procedure in Miami. 33-year-old Erica Russell, a mother of five, left her home in Tennessee in 2021 to travel to Miami for a Brazilian butt lift or BBL, the plastic surgery procedure that has one of the highest mortality She's rates. Money this is a young woman who came down here like a lot of people, she just wanted to change the way she looked. Unfortunately, she's never going to see her children again, and they're going to grow up without their mom. And that's a, a horrible, horrible thing. That This is a completely preventable death. This physician that performed the surgery is just a total box job. That's what it was, through and through. No one should be going under the knife with a surgeon who's been doing this all day. Uh, for over a dozen people for 14 plus hours. I wanted to get the real stats on the question, how dangerous are BBLs truly? We referenced earlier that the stat is potentially as high as one in 2,400 surgeries result in death. For comparison, the odds of dying while motorcycle racing are about one in 1,000, and the odds of dying while skydiving are about one in 100,000. And as far as BBL deaths go, there seems to be a pattern. Like most medical accidents, bad things occur when the surgeon gets tired, and at the clinics that prioritize quantity, they overload their surgeon schedule and the patients that die tend to be the ones that are seen at the end of the day or towards the end of the week. And typically, the cheaper the clinic, the more people they tend to see and the more bots, jobs, and deaths that occur. So when a clinic decides to prioritize quality over quantity, the operation actually tends to be decently safe. The, the paperwork that she was provided lies. She was told this doctor has staff privileges at this hospital. Turns out he didn't. You look at their marketing. You look at how they're targeting different folks and how they're portraying themselves. They present themselves as if they're the best docs on earth doing this stuff. Um, and in reality, what you what you come to learn when you're on our side looking into this stuff, these surgical centers, they're just businesses often being run by people who have no medical background whatsoever. Mm. And what they're doing is they're contracting with different doctors. Maybe they'll bury that in some piece of paper that says this doctor doesn't actually work for us. It's all smoke and mirrors. Listening to your favorite podcast is good. Taking it on the road, thanks to... Oh. We're out here in front of Seduction Cosmetic Center. This is the place that Erica Russell passed away shortly after having an operation here. Now, there's a big discrepancy. Google reviews, about 4.5 stars, thousands of reviews, looks really, really good. But on Yelp, they have mostly one star reviews. Alexis A said 25 days ago, surgeons nearly killed me here. I was in the ER and ICU receiving blood transfusions for four days. Do not go here. Do not put your life in these people's hands. Just one scroll down. The entire experience is sketchy. My girlfriend recently had a botched BBL removed and she was lied to about the price on six different instances. Then in the after surgery, she was not giving pain medication on the trip home. One of the stories that we're covering is the story of Erica Russell. Are you familiar with her story? She unfortunately died shortly after leaving this clinic. And so what we're looking into is also that some of these clinics, are they owned by doctors? Are they owned by just business people? And then the doctors are shuffled through. Like there's some stuff going on behind the scenes. Is this place owned by a doctor? Uh, some of them, they do, some of them. A non-doctor can open a surgery center? Yes. What's your role within this business? I take care of more like equipment-wise and medical stuff. Are there any misconceptions about the BBL industry that you'd like to address and tell the people back home? Any other procedures, you have risks. I don't know how to explain it, but it's safe. I'm not here to paint someone in a bad corner. We'll let the statistics do the talking. I don't really know. Total, how much money were you out because of this? A little over 10,000. The people there were so rude. This is Connie. I found her through the review her roommate left on Seduction Cosmetic Center Yelp page, and I wanted to hear the story behind the one-star review. Here's what she had to say. You, you were, it was a meat market. They were just in and out, in and out. And you know, there was a back door where, you know, obviously they take take people or supposedly take people for pre-op and surgery. You walked in and it smelled like death. I'm not kidding. 
it smelled rotten. I sat there for almost three hours that morning and not one time did one person that was in that waiting room go to, through that back door, not once. The reason why I made this technique is because I've had two girlfriends pass away. It was one of my baseball wives went in for surgery and she passed away and then I had another friend pass away and then within like that same month, it was like two other influencers of just doing multiple BBLs had passed away and I'm like, at what point in time are you gonna put your life on the line for beauty? My technique is probably the safest way to inject and volumize and get correction. And how do they die? Sometimes you get a blood clot, um, pulmonary embolism, you just, it just kind of depends. Each one of them was a clot that kind of dislodged uh, Again, cardiac arrest or pulmonary embolism is usually what happens. Were the doctors ever held responsible? This is a really dark side of medicine and a lot of people get upset at um, medical professionals, but we have consent forms that will protect us from everything. If you think you can get all this beauty for $5,000, you're gonna go to the butcher shops. They left a towel inside of you, um, you have an infection, they didn't take a drain or they didn't put in a drain. So there's a lot that comes with it, but it's really nice. Their marketing says 2K for 360 lipo and you only have 1800 in your bank account, you're gonna go to a place that you could afford. And there's been a lot of people that have been arrested, a lot of people have killed people. So do your research on the background of these people. They just put, cement or they say vitamins oh you did have, you say cement there's been cement there's been and they say medical grade silicone cement. which nobody uses anymore unless you're an orthopedic surgeon these are things that are going to give you bad results even later on in life do you know anyone in miami right now that has a botch job a couple hundred people yeah <laughs> okay i've been botched before by a doctor yeah it made me feel very self-conscious i was a really big bikini model, OnlyFans model at the time, and my body was my image. I felt very insecure and it kind of made me want to fix the problem as soon as possible because I did this to fix an insecurity, not to create a whole bunch of other ones. So I ended up going to do two more rounds of lipo after that within the same year with the same doctor because I told him like, you better fix this for free because I'm not paying anyone else to do it. And I've lost a lot of weight since then. It's not as visible, but if I do start putting on weight, it does come back. So that's just a thing I'm gonna have to deal with for the rest of my life. What did it cost you financially to give up that year? Definitely like six figures, I would say, throughout that year. I was actually put onto the show Botch. Patricia, interesting, because you went from a person very serious about golf to someone who's very serious about plastic surgery, right? Yeah. And how so, did that happen? Yeah, how did that work? I mean, just being in the social media world. So I did the first one in February, and then I had the second lipo in June. I went back in October. Another lipo? Yes. Three lipos in the same area in eight months. Yeah. In general, you should probably weigh at least a year before having revisional liposuction. But that created more loose skin, more trauma to the area, so it hasn't fully healed up. A lot of these doctors don't use scopes to kind of navigate where they're putting the fat. They just kind of do it blindfully. And if you put that right in one of those veins or a muscle or anything, you just... Done. <laughs>
And Someone came to her house and did it? Yeah, like I felt her butt and she was just like, it felt so good, honestly. It felt soft and it felt really nice. Have you gotten the video? I did in 2018. And I was very happy. The results were super natural. What led up to the decision to say, I want a BBO? Probably just like social media or something. I was working in the club, so you know everyone had big butts, so I wanted one too. What changed in your life? If we're talking like work-wise in the club, me getting my breasts um, implants is what changed my money the most. Like, was it a dramatic increase in earnings? Uh, like, absolutely, when I got my breast implants. You had an experience that went bad with I wouldn't say it went bad. I just, like, my butt got too big. It just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think my body was, like, having a reaction to the material that was injected in my butt and it was kind of creating scar, scar tissue, some inflammation. Um, I noticed some spots were starting to get like a little bit harder than other spots. How much did each surgery cost? For my original BBL in 2018, it was about $9,000 for the lipo and then the transfer of the fat. And then my removal surgery in 2021 was about $11,000 in Colombia because I got quoted $23,000 here from one doctor. Reconstruction surgery back in Colombia in 2022, it was about $10,000. Do you think it's peer pressure from women or men that incur? Definitely both. Do you feel like you're chasing a standard of beauty that's impossible to attain? Yeah, I think everyone is. I am very confident in who I am, but I would say my biggest insecurity would be my butt right now. Every procedure that I do is individualized, so I am actually putting volume where she needs it, and I know that she likes like a nice shelf. When you say a nice shelf, what are we talking about here? So I have four different techniques, right? So it's the shelf booty, which girls like that top shelf if they're... Where you could rest you know, a child here? Like correct, that. right? It's like that tabletop. So most girls, when they take pictures and you turn sideways, they want to make sure that they have this little shelf here. Then we do, for most girls who don't have anything, she has the perfect sweetheart booty. Sweetheart is this bottom part, right? Perfect. So she doesn't need volume right there at all. What I'm gonna do is just completely like round that out right there. I have basically what I call a half treatment prepared and usually this is good enough to correct one area in your glutes, right? So I know that she wants a shelf, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of volumize this upper outer shelf so we could keep it nice and round for her. I have a vibrating tool that just kind of distracts them. They're laying down, they have their blankets, everything is sterile. Uh, then I use numbing, which is lidocaine with epi, and then I go ahead and start injecting. So, right. What in God's green earth is it in these syringes? So the radius, the product that we spoke about, the biostimulator, and normal salines. Let's see what you got. Right. Folks. Bro. Oh my god, bro, look how long that needle is. Folks, I must let you know that there are a plethora of outtakes, great scenes, and extended cuts from this episode available only at Patreon. Link is in the pinned comment. So as you can see, with my technique, you are ready to go to the beach by the next day. How are you feeling? I feel amazing. How's your booty feeling? Um, it's a little like firm right now because it's like all filled up, but I know it's gonna feel amazing in like five hours. For the next segment, we're gonna be doing a touch test. A blindfolded participant is gonna be feeling a butt and uh, trying to determine is this a give me his job. A blindfolded participant is gonna be feeling a butt and trying to determine is this a BBL butt or a natural butt. As much as I would love to participate, I love my wife's sweet cheeks. I'm gonna let my camera guy, Miguel. Miguel's gonna be taking care of this one. Introducing Team BBL. <laughs> Team Natural. All right, Miguel, are you ready? Ready. These mushrooms make you feel better. They increase focus and energy while keeping you calm and stress-free. Plus, they cut down.
Okay, let's see. <laughs> Where do you think we go? BBL. <laughs> Natural. Okay. Okay, Currently good. fighting every biological urge known to man. <laughs> you have Miguel. <laughs> I would just say, if I was going out, I'd be wearing a four pairs of underwear. <laughs> okay. Alright. I'd say this is natural. Okay. We got one question. Yep. How do you feel about your job? I love it. The next booty is about a foot in front of your face, and it's looking scrumptious. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do my inspection. This feels natural too. Alrighty. <laughs> I'd say this is a uh, BBL. Alright. I think. A light BBL. Okay, one contestant away. How's it going so far? Good. I think that was pretty accurate. We have the final it's contestant of again. the afternoon. Final buttocks, buttocks, in front of me. That's an easy BBL. Yeah, that's BBL. Sure. Let me get one more feel. Final answer? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, does it feel like... Stiffer? Not stiffer actually. They all felt the same. I'd say it was more like felt, more inflated it felt. Like, honestly, like men do not know the difference. I think if we had a variety of women here, whether it's the injections, unless they're illegal, you would not be able to tell the difference. Four out of six? Ladies, what do you think about his accuracy? Oh, unless it's their illegal injections, most men will not be able to tell. Yeah. Can we give a round of applause for Miguel? Yeah. Good job, Miguel. Good job. Very professional. <laughs> Thank you for scientific purposes for donating your booties for their uh, research. And that concludes this scene. Cut. How hard was it not to get a boner up there? It wasn't because I could tell you're right next to me, so it'd be, that just like makes my shit not work, you know? Congratulations, young soldier. Tommy G, you hired. I'm highly. Doctor Miami. And one of the most highly rated surgeons in the area, Doctor Miami, who's at a reality TV show and seems to have a great time with booties and boobs. We're gonna walk in his office with the murder twins and see what the whole operation is about. The elevator that Fox paid for. And tits. Maybe penises too. Second floor. It sounds like you guys are at a fork in the road. BBL, natural. How would you say which way you're leaning and how you're considering this decision right now? Well, considering that we've figured out that you can get a BBL look through working out, natural might be a cool way to go considering health-wise. We'd still like to see more of the BBL side. Oh, do you have that face app? Yes. Can you show us how that works? I just took a couple. Yeah, this one's open, all right. So. We're here. Okay. And if you do want to open your eyes more again, we can go back to sizes and big eyes and we can open them up more. Like if you want. That is so strange. <laughs> okay, what's something else wild you can do to my face right now? Okay. Crazy, make him smile. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, so uh, there's different smiles too though. Like you're already smiling, but they can make you smile more. And most photos that you think we're looking at that's coming from the influencer model only fans world are touched up to some extent. Awesome. Yes, like almost. Um, I've even uh, introduced. Yeah, like even. Hey, Tommy. Hello. How are you Tommy. doing? We're playing around with face app right now. Oh, cool. They opened my eyes, gave me better looking teeth, a better good. looking butt. Good. So we're just. Oh. <laughs> good. We're on to one today. All right, excellent. Well, um, I, I basically do what the face app does, but. You know, for the knife. Yeah. It's inside the operating room like you've never seen before. How good is How nice is this booty looking? 
brought to you by the man known as Dr. Miami. Plastic surgeon Dr. Michael Solzauer taking viewers behind the scenes at surgeries. Most so graphic, we can't even show you. Welcome back to the afternoon for a wonderful Monday. We have a Brazilian butt lift. She is quite square beforehand. We are going to snatch her waist, give her a round booty. Capturing the before, after, and everything in between. Yeah, what all do you cover? Um, I do noses. Okay. That's the face part. Uh, I do a little light bulb. I seen him, like, he put like a, a stick, almost like a flathead screwdriver, up to woman, woman nose, tap the back of it with a hammer. Over the neck, jawline kind of stuff, baby. And I do a lot of boobs, butts, and tummies. You found a dream job, huh? It's pretty amazing. It's, it's, yeah, it beats coal mining. Well, Dr. Miami, I brought two models for you. Hello. Hello, ladies. They're both hey, good hey, The murder twins, but I can assure you yeah. they're friendly. We want to see what a, like a pre-op kind of looks like. Okay. The day of surgery or like it's just consultation? Like she just came off the street and she's, they're asking for bucks. They're considering getting booties. And titties, right? Yeah. We'll cover both. Okay. Who's your cool back? <laughs> Tommy Chippy. <laughs> we all struggle. We just don't like to admit it. He said he wants Sometimes to see you'll need him. Post what, Some what, what, what? Pre-op look like before getting them set up and shit. He trying to see. Who's your cool backpack in this? Oh, it's mine. That's it. Yeah, I did. Bella. Hey, Bella. Tommy. Nice to meet you. Nice to hear. Nice um, to meet you. Would you mind standing up for us for a second? There's a, <laughs> a little bit of a model. She had a, a BBL. Turn around. Yeah. Uh, which is what we call a skinny BBL because mm -hmm. she's skinny. I am. And uh, I put your jacket down for a second. Let's see the front. Mm -hmm. Did you do those two? Yes. And uh, also her waist. We also did what we call the Miami mini waist, which is basically reshaping the rib cage, make little cuts in the ribs and push them closer together. How does it impact your life now that you're walking, moving back to normal? I mean, I'm happier crazy. than ever. I love it. Um, now I'm like pulling NFL players. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I open that. She's pulling NFL players. I just love that. That's that's very high praise as a, as a plastic surgeon. Thank you. That's that's like you know that's like winning the Nobel Prize in this industry. What made you say, hey, I'm not gonna hire a personal trainer, go four times a week, eat the zucchini, avocado. Well, you know, in my defense, and in, in the defense of personal trainers, they can't really make the breast bigger. Yeah. I mean, I was already doing that, but like I still had like a little fat here and like my love handles. It didn't matter how much like. I worked out or like how healthy I ate. Like there was just stubborn fat. And, and like, she was skinny. Yeah. You know, she was obviously skinny to begin yeah. with. But there's certain areas that there's nothing you can do in the gym. What do you have over here, Dr. Miami? I have a collection of breast implants of various sizes and shapes. So that's something like that is. There's like a menu, you know. That's that's what's in your team. Yeah, that's what's in there. Yeah. So if I were to squish it, we feel exactly like this. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And this yeah. is silicone. Yes, it's silicone. This is like we call gummy bear silicone. I mean, it's closed my eyes. This would make what? Like, a, what? What kind? Depends of? what you start. With. Mm. For you, this would be for you probably like a small D cup. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So if you ever you know decide to go that way, let me know. Yeah. So first thing they do is they get into gowns. So your job involves a lot of boobies and butts. Yeah. Is it hard to fight your own biology in the process? You're asking a plastic surgeon if he gets an erection when he examines his patients. Is that what you're asking me? Has it ever happened? I mean, no, it's, it's it, never happened. Not even day one of the job. Okay. Like, okay. Oh, think of my grandma. Think of something else. Think of work. A. Hey. It's it, never happened. Not even <laughs> He asked the question of the hour. Realistically, he's a man. I don't care if he's married. If he doing so many women, he just seen one that he like. One of the jobs, like, okay. Like, oh, think of my grandma. Think of something else. Think of World War II. Think of like, think of Tommy G. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is that um, doctors, by the time you go through medical school, from day one, you're like dissecting bodies and stuff. So some switch happens in your brain. It's not to say that you couldn't get aroused with a patient. It's, I'm sure it's happened. But like by the time you're through medical school, you're pretty immune to the sight of naked bodies. Because you see, you don't just see the gorgeous ones. You see like, you know. All right, so the first questions we ask are like, do you have any medical yeah, issues? Or but, you know what I'm saying? When you see the gorgeous ones, just like, they, hey, you don't just see the gorgeous ones. But when you do, 
anything you need to know about diabetes, high blood pressure, anemia, blood clots, thyroid issues, nothing. Yeah. So that's the first thing you want to check, make sure that they don't have any medical problems that might make this not safe, right? You guys have any kids? Mm -mm. Okay, so no kids. We always ask about that too. Have you ever had surgery before of any kind? Uh, wasn't count and now that, that counts. That yeah. counts, yeah. Any surgery? No? Wasn't All right, yeah. cool. Face me if you don't mind. I think you're going to open up the gown. I'm going to do the breast oh, first. I'm backwards. You're going on backwards? Okay, that's right. <laughs> you, you guys wear it very fast. All right. So, um, what we do is first we measure. No two breasts are exactly the same. They're like sisters that look alike, but you know, not identical twins. 20, 20, you measure the distance, and her measurements are actually near perfect. So. And what made her titties say that those are just fine? Okay, so what you want, like ideal breasts, they make what's called an equilateral triangle. Mm. Remember trigonometry, yep. right? So like an equal distance from the super sternal notch to the nipples and then across. And for her height, she's like 20 and a half centimeters, equilateral triangle. Perfect. Um, so you know that's pretty much the exam. It doesn't take much more than that. Sometimes I'll, I'll feel for masses and things like that or under the armpit, but she's good. Before the surgery, she'd get a physical exam by her doctor, clearing her for surgery. So it's not like you can just come in and then do surgery the same day. You know, I'm just yeah. making that clear to everybody. <laughs> so okay, but wait, wait, let me see your front first because, like the tummy, because. Clear to everybody. <laughs> so okay, but wait, wait, let me see your front first because, like the tummy. Because what the BBL involves is taking fat from this area, like the areas of the body where you have a little extra fat, turn around, and putting it in the place that you do. And she has a beautiful butt actually already. Um, See the only I'm thing... Man. See what I'm saying, man? He told me she got a beautiful butt ox. Now, that's not getting aroused. Of course, Tommy was just playing, but bruh. Exactly. You you seeing something See, that you like, bro. And putting it in the place that you do. And she has a beautiful butt actually already. Um, the only thing I see, really gorgeous, the only thing I see we could do is maybe fill in these little dips I was talking about. So like... What are these dips all these women are mentioning? So it's this right here. So when you, for example, you look at Bella, poke, like Bella's butt now, like post-op, right? So she had fat here, but this was flat, right? When you work out, you can get these muscles to come out more. Okay. And she's just naturally blessed like that. But then what you can't do is add fat to this, what we call hip dip, or this flat area, right? You can't do that. So uh, you can't just eat and it have it go around here. Exactly. So what we do is we'll get rid of this over here. You, what you want in a curve is like a nice hourglass or Coke bottle shape. It should come in and then come out and be round like this. It should not go in and then out and then in again and then out again. And is that an actually attainable figure without this? No. 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 They're young. They're 24. Mm -hmm. Do you usually have people that young getting surgery? Oh yeah, it's very common in Miami. Yeah. Now let's yeah. just say she gets her butt or her tits done. Does she have to come here every 10 years and get a retouch, or how does that work? I would recommend that she at least follow up every 10 years, but not everybody has to have them retouched at 10 years. I've had patients have them in for 20 years. I've had patients where I didn't put them in, but they've had them in for 40 years. So I mean, as long as the breasts look good and feel good, you can leave them in for the rest of your life. But I do recommend you come back. There's a debate where it's like, look good, feel good. So you want people to feel good. Yeah. Would you ever feel like this industry is having women chase a beauty standard that's almost impossible to attain? Well, there's, there's a couple of ways to look at it. The first one we just discussed, there are natural signs of attractiveness between for men to have for women and women to have for men. Mm. And, you know, like if you look at the cover of a romance novel, it's always this guy that looks like He-Man, you know, like there are certain signs of attractiveness that are exact and those are like sort of ideals that's not created by anybody individually it's not it's not even created by the romance novel industry or even let's say Disney princesses you know when the little girls uh, you know are first exposed to like and boys to characters they're always these Disney princesses that have these like, tiny little ways perfect form perfect skin perfect hair perfect everything we're just here to try to let's see make people feel better in their skin you know, so that they, mm. but yeah, I mean, the actual you're, standards you're, are not set by us. It. We're just here to, you know, what's the word? Facilitate. Same thing with noses and chins and hair, everything. Just like hairdressers and everything else, you know. Now, there are clinics out there where people will literally die and they'll keep operating. You'll read the reviews. Somehow yeah. they have like 150 reviews with yeah. one star and people keep going there. Yeah. And Price. the doc, that's all. It's, just, it's cheap. No matter how many laws we put in to protect patients, patients are going to do what they want to do and it's a free country like nobody stops people in florida from riding a motorcycle without a helmet you know what I mean? even though i don't think you would or i would but you, you take your you take your risks 
and your benefits and you make your decision as, a, as an independent person. Those clinics where that have issues, they're just cheaper. That's the only thing. So if you want to get it and if this is the only thing that's in your budget, you'll do that or you'll go to Mexico or the Dominican Republic or Turkey and it can be hit or miss. You know, there are great surgeons in Turkey and great surgeons in Mexico, but if they're cheap, you're probably they're probably not the best. Would you have, are you married? Exactly. Yeah, I'm married, I'm married 30 years. Okay, would you have your own wife or daughter? Would you have, are you married? Yeah, I'm married, I'm married 30 years. Okay, would you have your own wife or daughters get a BBL or boob job? 100%, if they want to, 100%. Yeah? Yeah. 100%. What percentage of the clinics out there would you say are good, safe, reputable? I think 80 so if we say 100%, of course you would do your wife BBL. But bruh, I don't know if you could give your daughter a BBL, bro. I don't know. 5% yeah, are probably good, safe, reputable. Okay. You're a good guy, gotcha. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You're a good guy, too. Yeah. Big, Big pleasure. Thank you so much. Mine. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sitting next to you again. All right. Damn, man. Oh, Dr. Miami is crazy. That shit look beautiful. Oh, my. Right. Chill out. Chill out, Tommy. Why is Tommy? We're here on Miami Beach. We're put into the test. Can someone achieve a BBL booty without actually getting a BBL? And what are the ways to maintain your booty so it has maximum gluteus roundness? Thick toned, muscular, thick toned, juicy, round, voluptuous. Mm. <laughs> right, I'm gonna start with a simple body weight squat. So I just want you to start squatting normal and I'm gonna start making adjustments on your own spot so you can feel more glutes. Yanni already knows the deal. She's the, right. the perfect squat bottle, so I'm not going to fix her shows. for now. If you want an excuse to feel my ass, just say it, all right? <laughs> Sorry, wife. Professional purposes only. Yes. <laughs> so what are you going to do? You're going to squat down and hold. Nice. No hands. Yeah. Now you're going to arch your butt oh. more to the back. Already feeling it? Nice. Now you come up. And when you squat down, I want you to do that motion. Push your knees out, almost like you're trying to push your knees to your pinky toes. Yeah. Now, think about there's a little stool behind you, and you're sitting behind it. You're not squatting forward, you're squatting back. Push your butt back. Spread those knees out, come on girls. Yes, more, 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 more. Good, keep going. <laughs> Tommy, what is you old, man? Look at this too. <laughs> Look at this. Hey, Tommy G, I was seeing you, man. Look at the motherfucking cakes on that one. Is someone... So I think the real question is, is someone willing to put in the work to do it with the diet, in the kitchen, on the gym, on the sand, doing it the right way? Or do they want to go to a surgeon that's gonna... I mean, they both work, right? They both right. work, it's just what type of work are you willing to put? I know surgery is not easy to recovery. Nobody tells you that until you do it. Wow. Also, the money. I feel like here in Miami, uh, wherever they're getting their money, but so surgery is very, it. yeah. Surgery is very expensive if you want something like nice and quick. But also, she's been doing this for over 20 years. And I thought I was going to get her body within two years that I've been training with her. And so far, so good, but it's not so what far, I'm looking so for. Very good. So. How long are you willing to put the work for and what type of work are you willing to put? And is that that instant result? Yeah, you get out of the office and you have that shape already. You have the volume. You have, you, I'm going to go through a, a long recovery, but with clothes on. What I've noticed about the BBL is sometimes a BBL looks better with pants on than pants off. Oh, yeah. Like pants on, you're like, oh my God, that is an ass. And then they, <laughs> you see it and you're like... It looks kind of a little odd. Well, for the most part, surgeries, like I told you yesterday, they're not perfect. So in clothes, they look fantastic. That's why I was trying to get you to see the scar on that other patient, because once they take their clothes off, 
their belly buttons are up here there's like fibrosis man. they're uneven the man that's one thing i be saying like okay the bb is one thing but when they get the titty bruh they should be like this pointing two different ways it looks like all lumpy and bumpy but of course closed compression garments make everything look nice and tight small waist yeah. big ass but it's kind of an illusion what would be your message to women out there that are considering they're they're on the fork of the road they want the perfect booty man they want what you got and they're wondering do i go natural or do i go surgery route what would you tell them i tell them go natural any time of the day because that would be the best decision you have in the long term i'm 38 now and my booty looks so much better today than when it did when i was 28 so much better when men are looking at instagram photos of models and people out there what percent of them you think are altered in a way 95 percent. Yeah, yeah i would say when i first moved out to miami they told me that i had to basically make myself look prettier than i am in person on well, instagram not even that. like I the first even... people that were trying to help like run my instagram they were like yeah you have to look prettier than you are in person you got to use photoshop you got to use face app yeah and like i was like oh okay like you sit that's there it. and wonder like how are these girls so pretty like and then like it comes it's it's like, yeah it's, it would be like if men started just photoshopping six packs everywhere we go that's pretty much right Tommy, you are wild. <laughs> he even had them change clothes. It's on me. I'm gonna need y'all to work out. Same. Bruh. You fucking ass they gonna do. He put on yeah, you're from Brazil. You've been in America for a long time. You you know the difference between the cultures. Like, do you think America has more of a superficial culture around body? I don't think it's more superficial. I think it's just based in different things than Brazil is. In Brazil, we're very much so about conquering the body. It's like we're very like I love I love to look good. In Brazil, like women really like take good care of themselves. And <laughs> most of the big cities, you'll never see a woman uh, walking around in flip flops going to like, anywhere basically with how much garbage is in our food do you think it's harder for people to look and feel good in america much harder yeah i think the food industry here is, is horrible borderline criminal it's it's really really bad it always makes us feeling like less like we're not enough like our butts are not big enough like, my waist is not small enough my boobs are not high enough so I think the pressure comes from each individual woman, not even like collectively, as you know, just women shaming each other for like, oh, my boobs are bigger. Like, women don't do that. Is it hard to be comfortable in your own body? Yes. Which is a question I make myself often, like, why is it that we're so mean to each other? I'm sorry. We're so mean to ourselves all the time. Because if I see my friend or if I see any of those girls here, like, I see beauty in them. But when I look at myself in the mirror, the first thing I see are not, it's not the beauty, it's the flaws. I don't know where it comes from. It's, it's not from social media, although I think social media really enhanced it. It's something way, way before that. But we are so prone to see first our flaws and focus on them and uh, like obsess over them instead of looking at the good things that are going. And it's so hard to actually recognize, oh, but I'm working out and I'm, I'm losing weight and I'm, I'm good. We always have that mindset of like, I'm good, but not enough. I can still lose a pound. I can still grow an inch. At the heart of the BBL phenomenon, it really comes down to the age-old human desire to be seen, admired, and to feel comfortable in our own skin. Because the reality is, we are imperfect beings with insecurities and things about ourselves that we wish we could change. But the truth is, that's also what makes us special and unique. And my fear is that as a society, we are trending towards a world that thirsts too much for instant gratification. We all know nothing great comes easy. An Olympian takes years to perfect their craft. A home-cooked meal will always beat microwave box food. And a butt shaped by years of dedication to a good diet and exercise routine, in my opinion, will always beat the enormous BBL butt that the skinny legs don't quite match. So I suppose I'm going to leave you with this. I encourage you to take the long route and enjoy the struggle that comes with it. Because after all, the magic enjoy of life is simply to enjoy the journey that we're on. Enjoy the journey, man. Hey, but if you is trying to get that one together, ain't nothing wrong with a little BBL. I ain't even gonna say, you know what I'm saying? Do what you wanna do. I would just say, if you just 
want that shape and you not that shape, just get a little lipo workout, see how that work for you. But yeah, peace out, y'all.